President Trump's racist tweets have sharply escalated partisan tensions in Washington. The House voted mostly along party lines yesterday to condemn the president's comments in which he told four congresswomen of color to, quote, go back to the countries they came from. This is In the Spotlight. It's about people on this planet that has captured the attention of bloggers like me. Listen and learn more about your concerns on In the Spotlight. The president again defended his tweets at a cabinet meeting yesterday and accused the four congresswomen of hating America. When we sat down with the squad yesterday for their only TV interview as a group, we asked if they had any regrets about things they have said in the past. Now, that includes vulgar words from Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib about impeaching President Trump. Do you think that that kind of language is helpful? And what did you hope would come of that? No, I mean, I, day. from day one, I truly believe that he has committed impeachable offenses. And me, you know... But even if you believe be, but that, even the me fact cursing, that you called him... But I didn't do it on the House floor. And I'm going to be unapologetic in myself. 70% of Americans curse. I am real. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. I am rooted in where I come from. And it's very common for me and for many of my residents to say things like that. But so for, you don't for regret, folks, you don't absolutely regret that. not. I'm unapologetic about it. I'm definitely, definitely going to push forward and saying we have to impeach him. We also asked asked Congresswoman Ilhan Omar about her past comments suggesting some politician support for Israel is motivated by money. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle denounced those comments as anti-Semitic. Oftentimes there are uh, things that you might say might not hold weight for you, but to someone else, right? The way that we hear um, and consume information is very different than how the next person uh, might. So you don't regret your words either? I do but not, but I have gotten the, I, I am grateful um, for the opportunity to really learn how my words made people feel um, and have taken uh, every single opportunity I've gotten um, to, to make sure that people understood um, that I, I apologize for it and would I you never, like people to, would I you, never would really like to want them to that you were not anti-semitic oh certainly not yes would you like to make that clear yes I mean and that I, nothing I said at least to me um, was meant for that purpose the squad of freshmen is very progressive and their views haven't always aligned with party leadership or their colleagues AOC I've heard people say you're new here Shouldn't you wait and get the lay of the land to understand how Washington works? I think one of the things that's funny, I, I, and I, I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing <laughs> at the sentiment, because... You've heard that sentiment. I've, oh, I'm not the first person that said no, that to you. absolutely yes. not. Mm -hmm. But not just me, but the entire fresh, freshman class, I would argue, regardless of ideology, was sent here because Americans are sick of how Washington works. So why would I learn a broken playbook where lobbyists have taken over this place, where they influence all the bills, where we vote on things because they've how, they've, that's how things have always been done here. Americans are not getting wage increases. Our government is continuing to sow dysfunction. Why would we operate business as usual when business as usual is not serving the public? As we sit here today, there appears to be a fractured relationship mm -hmm. between the squad, the four of you, and Nancy Pelosi. Mm -hmm. Do any of you think that that relationship needs to be repaired or that there needs to be work done to heal that relationship? Is there a fracture? Anybody? I don't feel a fracture. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I think that just as there were members of Congress that did not vote for the speaker on the House floor the day of our swearing in, just as there are members who challenge her conclusions, who disagree with her, so do we from time to time. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean that there is a fundamental fracture or a dehumanizing uh, going on within our caucus. When President Trump first tweeted about the women, Speaker Pelosi was quick to jump to their defense on Twitter, despite public disagreements over the emergency border aid package. Ocasio-Cortez rebuked Pelosi for singling out the women for their vote against the bill. You know, when you say things like the Speaker of the House is being disrespectful to women of color, is she, uh, according to you, being dis disrespectful to women of color because of your color or because she doesn't like your policies or the tactics that you all are taking well, to make your point? Right, and I'll clarify. Uh, 
I did not say that she was disrespectful of women of color. I found some of the comments disrespectful, and that was my personal opinion. Okay. And I did feel that singling out on the basis of one vote was creating an opening. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we that we fundamentally disagree or fundamentally disrespect each other's position and power and ability to be here. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes us united as a caucus. Are you speaking to Nancy Pelosi? Our teams are, are in communication, our chiefs are... are but shouldn't it be a face-to-face -face with you and the speaker yeah. as opposed yeah, to, I think as opposed to your people and her... The, right. the, shouldn't right. it be a face-to-face... -face but you're new members of that Congress, question. but no. I'm very protective. With all due respect, mm -hmm. she doesn't need protection. Right. I want to know if you are She's speaking. She's the new member, not the speaker. No, but she I want to know. She has every right to sit down with her in any moment, any time, with any of us. Yeah. She is speaker of the House. She can ask for a meeting to sit down with us for clarification. The fact of the knowledge is, and I've done racial justice work in our country for a long time, acknowledge the fact that we are women of color. So when you do single us out, be aware of that and what you're doing, especially because some of us are getting death threats, because some of us are being singled out in many ways because of our backgrounds, because of our experiences and so forth. But I think Alexander, the question are you interested be... in having a conversation face to face oh, absolutely. with Speaker, House Speaker would, Nancy absolutely. Pelosi? Why wouldn't she sit down with her? Yeah, no, absolutely. And we've reached out to that end. Buy the book that everybody's talking about, Mom Said, A Little Book to Grow By. Available now at GetReadyProductions.com.